Hi everybody, James Jones here, Technical Solutions Architect for Nginx. And in this video, we're going to show you how to set up your own uh, little live streaming setup with Nginx. And it's going to look, this is kind of the configuration that we're going to be going for. It's going to have, I'm going to be, we're going to have FFmpeg as our stream encoder. And I'm just going to be streaming a video. Um, using FF, FFmpeg, using the RTMP protocol to the Nginx server. That's gonna act as a RTP, RTMP um, ingest. And we'll be able to also play back from the same server using RTMP, HLS. And we're also going to add, um, we're gonna add a third one there. We're gonna add Dash, um, just to show that working. And then I'm gonna use VLC to do the stream playback. So the way you get started with this is that you log in to your Linux machine. And in this one, I am actually using Ubuntu. I'm using Ubuntu Bionic 18.04. And there's some things you're going to need ahead of time to do this to compile. You're going to need your compiler. You're going to need make, autoconf, and a couple other other developer tool other developer tools which comes in this build essentials package and then you also need PCRE3 lib SSL and zlib and zlib is used for compression um, on http so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to add these packages All right, looks like they were already installed on this machine. Great. Now, the next thing you want to do, I'm just, I'm just going to make a little temporary build directory for myself. So I'm going to call it nginx. I'm going to change into that directory. And then there's two repositories that you're going to want to clone. Um, you're going to want to get the RTMP module. That's this one here. And all the links are going to be posted uh, either in the description below or on the blog post that this is a uh, part of. And then I'm going to use the uh, master branch from the Nginx repository, or you can actually go to um, GitHub there, go to the releases and pull one of the tarballs. But I'm just going to use Git here. So let's clone the... Our TMP module, and now we're going to clone uh, Nginx. We're going to go into the Nginx directory here, and then we're going to configure and compile using the RTMP module. Now, one thing to note when you're building directly from the git repository you will need to run the configure command from within the auto directory like you see here and if it's a regular release tarball the configure uh, command will be right in the root not under the auto All right, so we're all configured here. Let's go ahead and make. And this will take a few moments to compile. Um, the, that's, but this is one of the cool things about Nginx is that I'm compiling this live now. It's so tiny and lightweight, but it can do so much. So it's, it's, this is what I think, one of the things I find amazing about Nginx. And it shouldn't be too much longer here. And there we go. And then we're going to do a sudo make install. And it, when you build from source and you don't define the prefix in your, in your configure command, it will actually install it in user local nginx. Now, before we continue, I want to go over, go over the... Um, Nginx configuration that I'm going to be installing here and kind of walk you through it. These are kind of the typical defaults that you see in any Nginx config. 
Um, but what we really want to pay attention to is this RP, RTMP context and this HTTP context. And with the HTTP or with the RTMP context here, we're going to be putting a server context and we're going to listen on 1935. That's the default TCP port for RTMP. And then we're going to add an application context. An application context is, um, it's like different RTMP endpoints. And this one I just happened to name live. And what you want to do is you want to have live on. Interleaf really isn't important, but it's a optimization for um, combining, uh, letting it know that you're going to be combining the uh, video and audio uh, chunks within the same RTMP, RTMP packet. And we want to turn HLS on because we want to have HLS playback for mobile devices. Um, you know, like iOS. That. We want to define a path for where the fragments are going to go. And then we want to set how long the fragments are going to be. And we want to do a very similar thing for dash. So dash on, the dash path, and the dash fragments. Pretty identical. Now another cool feature that you can do, um, if you don't want to, if you don't have like a broadcast machine, but you already have a stream that you that's already going someplace and you want to pull and you're doing this to kind of build in some more redundancy and adding a more uh, capability or more capacity to be able to view that stream, you could actually just do a pull from the RT, RTMP location for it. Um, and, but you, one of the important things you need, really need to give it that name tag, because without that name tag, um, it will not be able to um, auto-generate the metadata and the and the files that are needed um, for generating the HLS and Dash um, files, and I'll show you, I'll I'll show you kind of how that comes into play later on. Now let's go over the HTTP uh, HTTP context configuration. We just have our default uh, uh, MIME type, um, and we're just setting up a server context. We're going to have it listen on port eighty. We're setting the root location to root TMP because that's where we're putting the dash and HLS. And then we're just defining some MIME types here for, you know, for the HLS metadata, for the HLS fragment, web pages, obviously, and for the dash metadata. So pretty straightforward, not too terribly too difficult. And there's other things you can do to optimize, but this is kind of like minimal viable product just to get this working, kind of show you what you can do. And I already happen to have the, the config on this machine. I just need to copy it in place. Whoops, what did I do there? That was that was silly. You need to copy. I want to copy there. <laughs> All right. So we got the configuration there. So what we want to do is we want to ver we want to validate. We want to validate the configuration. And you can do that with uh, giving the nginx command a minus t. And the configuration is good, and tests were successful. So now we're just going to run the nginx command without any options, and away we go. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to start our stream. I already have a file that I'm going to stream. Um, it's the Big Buck Bunny video, the open source little animation thing that Blender did. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get that streaming. And we're going to bring up three instances of VLC. So I can show you the three different playback methods. All right, great. So let's go ahead and we'll open up the RTMP one first.
Now, one thing to point one thing to point out that I wanted to point out before before I, before I do that, I forgot is if you look here. Let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger. Make this a little bit bigger. But here, the RTMP address, which I'm streaming to, which is that live, which is the application name, and then the name I want to give the stream. And this is really important because you need a name that will get prefixed to all the automatically generated files for the HLS and dash streams. And I can show you now because that should be up and running. If we do, a, let's switch to root real quick. And if we look at the dash directory, you can see that name is what's prepended to all these files for the dash stream. And this, you'll see the same thing for the HLS, which is pretty important. That's how you, you can actually have more than one RTPM, RT, RTMP stream um, being ingested. As long as you have a different name on it, you can you can have multiple streams coming in and being uh, in, re encoded, or not re encoded, but um, split up for HLS and Dash, which is kind of cool. So now let's go ahead and open up RTMP. Play. No. And then open up one of these other ones. And this one we're going to do HLS stream. There's it. Do it this way. And you can see that I'm you know, HLS BBB dot M3 U8 as we're going to load up the metadata file. Make sure we put the HTTP in front as we have to go to the web server to start pulling those files. And next we will pull up the dash one. D. That one is in the dash directory. Play. That should load up here shortly. Yeah. Turn these. Oh. And there you go. So you have your own live streaming setup and three different ways to watch with this example. I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions, let us know. We'll be more than happy to help. And thanks again for watching.